Thirteen Week Theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribers get exclusive early access. And by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. Shirley Hemphill had been starting out in a career in stand-up comedy when she sent cassettes of her routine to Flip Wilson. Wilson invited her out to visit the set of his TV show, and she decided then and there to move to L.A. to pursue comedy. A casting agent caught Hemphill's stand-up act and cast her in a guest spot on Good Times. Lock the door, stupid. All right. Not you, stupid. <laughs> You stupid. And <laughs> not. Do you always have to call me stupid? Sorry, dummy. Don't call me dummy either. Just cause I never went to school on me, I'm dumb. All right, all right. But God help you if you hurt one of my children. Rise! I know, close the door, stupid. Norman Lear was so impressed that he offered to build a good time spin-off around Hemphill's character, but she turned the offer down, preferring to stay in supporting roles for the time being. Instead, she auditioned for, and Lear cast her in, the role of Shirley the Waitress in What's Happening, which he was co-developing with Buddy Orkin. Shirley. What? What? Here's a dollar. Oh, thanks. Yeah, give that to Liz for me. <laughs> give it to yourself, turkey. <laughs> and Phil proved to be the standout performer on the show, and when ABC canceled What's Happening After Three Seasons rather than agree to a pay increase for the three leads, network executives wanted to keep Hemphill around, and they asked for a new series to be developed just for her. This time, Hemphill said yes. What's Happening executive producer Sam Turtletaub and production company Columbia Pictures Television came up with a rags-to-riches story and a supporting cast filled with recognizable character actors like Mel Stewart, Carl Ballantyne, Keen Curtis, and Richard Paul. The result? One in a million. Hemphill played a cab driver, also named Shirley, who had a corporate magnate as one of her regular fares. Morning, Shirley. Right on time as usual. Oh, good morning, Mr. Grayson. Straighten your tire. The executive was very no, impressed me, with Shirley's business instincts there, and the now, advice that she gave him go. when she oh, took him you. to work each day. How am I doing today? Oh, you looking good in the financial section. Bad in the sports section. Did I lose to you again? Well, the Dodgers were behind when I went to bed. Yeah, but Garvey homered in the tent. You're going to break me, Shirley. <laughs> well, do you want your five dollars now, or should we go for double or nothing on this afternoon's game? Ten or nothing? Oh, look. You can see your bill of the meal. Yes, beautiful, isn't it? No, it's not beautiful. <laughs> it's filthy. You know, it's not right. You know, millions of people see that every day, and they know it's your building. Hey, that makes you look bad. Mm. Sandblast that sucker. You're right as always, Shirley. Mm -hmm. Nancy, dear, have our Wilshire building sandblasted. Hey, uh, and you then, this whole one day... This is just in. Jonathan Grayson, one of the richest, most influential men in America, and chairman of the board of Grayson Enterprises, died of a heart attack today. Grayson was 82 Mr. years Grayson's old. Grayson's office, Nancy Boyer speaking. Oh, hi, Shirley. Uh, hi, Nancy. Hey, I just heard about Mr. Grayson over the radio. I'm very sorry. I really liked the old guy. Oh, he liked you too, Shirley. He really did. He... Uh, Shirley, do you think you might come by the office as soon as possible? Mr. Grayson left something for you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I know what it is. You do? Yeah. You know, I, I feel kind of funny about taking it now. I mean, with him gone. Oh, but surely he wanted you to have it. Yeah. Okay, sure, I'll come by. Uh, 
Bye. I think she knows about Mr. Grayson's will. Oh, impossible. I mean, I was the only one who knew he was leaving her all of his shares in this company worth $200 million. <laughs> well, bet's a bet. Better get over there and get my $10. <laughs> Hi, so you want to go give me my money? I have a check here for all of it. Well, here. Actually, I didn't really want to come by and get this, but Nancy said that um, Mr. Grayson wanted me to... Uh -huh. <laughs> There is no error. That is the value of the shares Mr. Grayson left you as of closing today, $200 million. If you think it should be a penny more, you're wrong. I would imagine that you'd be thrilled to get a check for 200 million breads. <laughs> well, don't you want to say something? Yes, I do. Your name is Stone, isn't it? Uh, yes. Catch me, Stone. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Shirley was tempted to take a cash offer from the company's vice president for her newly inherited shares. Listen, we all have spent too much time doing things other people wanted. Shirley. Shirley, I know I haven't been able to give you very much. Dad, I've always had everything I've needed. Yes, but now you have a chance to buy something you don't need, to, to eat anything you want on the meat side of the menu, to wear sweaters that don't scratch, to go places they take pictures of. Oh, surely take the money. Right in the back of the cab. <laughs> but when she heard about his plans for the company, she reconsidered. Miss Simmons, I've heard enough. Well, then you better shove your elbows in your ears because I'm not through talking. Shirley wound up using her controlling share of the company to install herself as CEO. I'll be the first one to admit that I don't know much about big business, but I thought I knew something about people, that they were decent, you know, that they would help one another out, you know, especially if they were the one that have and the others were the ones that needed. Now, all you people here in this room have, but there's a whole lot of country out there that needs... Now you say, what do they need? They need energy. You see, somebody's got to find a way to take that fuel and that heat from that sun up there and bring it down here. And I really thought you folks were going to vote to do that. But I was wrong. Oh, yeah, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Grayson was right, because he said you all was against it. But it seems to me that somebody's got to be for it. Because you know Mr. Grayson was for it, but he's gone now. But his stock is still here. And guess who got it? Ha <laughs> ha! Look at you now. You're on your way. Things are getting better every single day. And so right. And that's the way you stay. Cause it's your chance to do it. A Million debuted on January 8, 1980. Popular and talented star, amazing supporting cast, experienced producers, brilliant writers, and yeah, what happened? This. Sunday, Monday, happy days. 
one in a million fell into what had become a black hole on ABC's schedule, created that fall when ABC uncoupled top-rated Laverne and Shirley from its lead-in, Happy Days. The show that ABC put in that space, Angie, couldn't hold on to Happy Days' audience. And oddly, nothing on any other network could either. It was as if all of America just decided to turn their televisions off for half an hour and go do something else until 9 o'clock and Three's Company. ABC hoped that one in a million would fill that gap. But then after only two weeks, the network decided to move it to make room for another guaranteed hit from Gary Marshall. But that's another story. To make room for one in a million on the schedule, ABC bumped Three's Company spin-off The Ropers, which is a story unto itself out of its 8 o'clock Saturday night time slot. So starting with the show's third week, One in a Million found itself up against... Um, yeah. One in a Million quickly morphed from a title to odds of survival. ABC decided to cut its losses and just left one in a million to die at the hands of Ponch and John. They did all air 13 episodes that they had ordered and then unceremoniously pulled the plug on April 5th. There was a teeny tiny little glimmer of hope when ABC, literally having nothing else to throw into a certain time slot during summer reruns, started re-showing one in a million. Could summer success lead to a late pickup as a mid-season replacement? Well, the time slot they put it in was as a summer replacement for That's Incredible, which meant that it was up against WKRP in Cincinnati and Little House on the Prairie. So, no. After One in a Million flopped, Hemphill went back to doing stand-up, which led to a few comedy specials on cable... And she also guest starred on a number of different shows before reprising her role as Shirley the Waitress on What's Happening Now. And then that led to a career in film in the early 90s, which was cut short when Shirley Hemphill died of kidney failure in 1999 at the age of 52. In the end, One in a Million proved to be little more than a footnote in a brilliant career, but one that raised interesting questions about what could have been. Would Shirley have returned to stand up or done what's happening now if she were still doing one in a million? Would she have branched off into films? We may never know, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Instead of dwelling on one failure, it's better to remember Shirley Hemphill as a brilliant actress whose career and life was tragically cut short. One in a minute.